Hey, I'll show you a very simple reason why accept of a value does not work to discharge bills. One, because no one has ever showed that to work. And two, when it comes to public court cases. Here's a court case of the man generally known to have created the method. You can cross-reference it yourself and you can fact-check it yourself. Here's a court case. I'm just going to go through the highlights and the summary of it so that you see for yourself. This is for the, the people who are not too sure just yet, who are just trying things to see if it works. Or you heard someone say something and you're carried away with it. This one is for you. Uh, except if a value was done, let me, let me return for sediment. This was the man who invented this. This is the official court transcript, or the proceeding, and we'll show the transcript also. Accept for value, return for settlement, exempt from levy, blah, 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 all that good stuff, right? And this is the charges. This is the indictment right here that this was done. So he accepted the, the charges that count an indictment for value, right? Meaning it was supposed to work, something was supposed to happen. Well, what happened next? They did a pretrial proceeding. Now, you see a lot of people uh, pleading guilty to the facts and not the crime. There's a video that I did regarding a guy who did something similar like this, doing an acceptor for value under conditions and uh, pleading to the fact, pleading guilty to the fact and not the crime. We've already dealt with that, that flaw, meaning the fact is what determines the crime. So if you're pleading guilty to the fact, you're handcuffing yourself. You're already throwing yourself in jail and prison without them doing it. And here's an official court transcript of the proceeding. Right here. Of him doing that same thing. The man who invented this whole thing. So, here's a pretrial proceeding. The prosecutor read the charges. The judge said, thank you. In respect to those charges, do you wish to plead guilty or not? And then he said, on behalf of the defendant, I plead guilty. The court, the judge, the acting judge said, say that again. He responded, I said, on behalf of the defendant, I plead guilty to the fact. Remember, this whole pleading guilty to the fact that this is being done after he accepted the indictment for value. Which is what a lot of people did, like the last video that I just showed. A lot of people mimic this. This is the guy who created all that except for the value stuff now. Now, by the way, this case is regarding failure to file a tax return. And then they go on and on and on and on. And then he asked the prosecutor they put on uh, the guy as a standby attorney. He said, well, can you repeat that for me? And then, of course, the prosecutor, being a lawyer, would only incriminate him. He said, I'm guilty of. I plead guilty to the facts. The guy said, no, that's not what I said. The standby attorney said, oh, I'm sorry. I will refer to the court reporter. And then the court reporter read it, what he said on behalf of the defendant, I plead guilty to the fact. But guess how that acting judge interpreted it? He pled, literally. The acting judge repeated these words, which is admissible as evidence according to rules of evidence, I plead, you just pled. And he told him, you pled guilty to the fact. The facts determine the claims that they're bringing against you. And the acting judge just pointed that out. He said, well, and then the guy said, just as she said. The court said, which is the acting judge, but whenever you see in transcript the court or in the rest of the cartas, when in the court decision they say, the court, the court basically is referring to the acting judge. Says, well, that would make you guilty. Why? Because you pled to the fact. You pled guilty to the fact. That's the whole point of trial and pretrial, to determine the fact. And you're willingly saying you're pleading guilty to it. Why? For what? What law says that? Why? Because it just sounds good. You just somebody made that up. This is the guy who made it up right here. The defendant. Now you're doing the same thing, accepting for value, condition and acceptance. Come on now. The acting just said, well, that would make you guilty and subject to the penalties that are have been set forth. 
And do you, I take it then, you do not wish to go to trial on the fact, is that correct? Because the trial is to test the sufficiency of the claim, to see if facts exist to support the suppositions. But he just willingly pled guilty to the fact. This is what, this is the guy that's teaching people these things. Then they went on and on. It got to a point where the acting judge realized, man, this man really doesn't know what he's doing. And he just got disrespectful. Watch. The acting judge, that is. Defendant, that's why I pled guilty, guilty to the fact. There have been no fact established in this matter yet, Your Honor. Well, in respect to this matter, yes, there have. There has been fact. And the fact is a supposition of that indictment itself, which is sufficient enough to state a claim if you don't report it in the affirmative defense. And acceptance for value is not an affirmative defense. You've waived that right. You're doing something that's speculative, something that's a lay opinion, that's not an expert witness opinion. I mean, come on. And you expect that to be an affirmative defense? It's not. Rule 8 and Rule 12 lays out to you what an affirmative defense is in federal rules of civil procedure he did none of that he just wrote except for for value return for sediment which you will see a lot of people do it does not work wake up be realistic well in respect to this matter he's pleading guilty to the fact and he's the acting judge repeats it to him again and if do you have any basis I still am confused as to what you want because you can go to trial before a judge or a jury you could be your own lawyer to the extent that we've talked about and you wouldn't have to do anything you'd have the power of the court to produce evidence look at that look at that you would have the power of the court to produce evidence and witness evidence you waive your right to produce evidence any moment you plead. We went over that before. And if a worse, you're pleading guilty to the fact. The whole purpose of trial and due process is to determine the fact. And you're just waiving all that? Under what law? Under what rule that's in harmony with law? None. Just some speculation. He's even affording me him due process. You will be presumed to be innocent. Look at that. He's saying, look, I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you here. How many acting judge do you see utter these words? Rarely do you see acting judges utter these words. The acting judge goes on to say, you would have the lawyer counsel to advise you all through the trial. Meaning we're not going to impose one on you. We're just going to put one as a standby for you. And if you need the privileges and the, the the prestige of an attorney to work things out in the back end with us we got you we'll help you we'll wear two hats for you that's what they're telling him all through the proceeding you will have the right to confront any of the government's witness and examine those witnesses to have your lawyer do that for you you can take the witness stand and state what your position is and if you choose not to so and so so and so And now he's basically doing a Feretta hearing. And so you're waiving the valued constitutional right by entering a plea of guilty to the fact in this case. As far as challenge to the law, you can make the challenge to the law at any time that you would just... <laughs> he's telling him you can do a constitutional challenge. This acting judge is giving him all the clues. And this case is regarding the man that created the court, the, the Accepted for value stuff. Read this. Read this case. This is, read it. A lot of people mimic what this guy is doing. He got sentenced to jail for this case. Off of doing accepted for value and pleading to the fact. He hung himself. You don't do that learn what happened after this he did a I guess this was supposed to be a discovery which is a kind of synonymous with interrogatory which is a bill of particular he did that but they don't look at the title of the of the of the document they look at the substance because the title is just the form of it 
whatever is in the body is the substance of it. And then look at all this, all the sovereign sense and stuff. Look at all this. And then as a response, the matter is before the court to address defendant's document titled Plain Bar and Demand for Written Bill, Bill in Particular, True Bill in Commerce. A lot of people just love throwing this word commerce around. It's just a buzzword. It's just a trend. It's just fashion to people now. After careful review of the entire document, I am satisfied that it presents no legal issue to be resolved because it raises nothing that can compel any actions. There's no law behind it. So there can be no operational law to enforce anything. That's what the acting judge is saying. To the extent the document can be construed as a motion, meaning, well, whatever you put in, we can tie it all you want. We are considering a motion because you want us to move and make a decision, right? That's what a motion is. In order for us to be moved, it has to be a motion. So we'll construe it as such so we can make a decision. It is entirely lacking in merit and provides no basis upon which the defendant could be entitled to relief. Accordingly, the motion is denied. And then one thing after and after the other, they sentenced them. They sentenced them. Read this case. Go through this transcript. They, they sent us him. After doing all that acceptance for value, all that stuff, condition acceptance, uh, return for settlement, pleading guilty to the facts, all that stuff. They entered a judgment against him. Oh, and by the way, the reason what they were saying about him uh, not filing taxes on is the promissory note. So to all you people doing promissory notes, this is your eventual fate. Read this section. 18 U.S.C. 514, fictitious obligation. Keep, keep issuing those promissory notes. The order judgment against him. Then he created a document regarding his imprisonment for each count. And then they served it. Just like they would require a return on writ for habeas corpus. Well, whenever they do, they do an imprisonment at a federal level, they do the same thing. They put conditions and all that. So bottom line, accepted for value does not work. Whether to remove liability of bills or to deal with public court cases. Pleading guilty to the fact does not work. Be realistic. Learn the right way. Do it right. 